what you can see here in the sketch file is the floor plans. Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to choose the line tool. And with the line tool, I am just going to go all over the parameter of our uh, house here. So it's going to be something like this. Obviously, we do not care about the back end. Like, I do not care about being precise here. We're not going to model everything here in the back. Uh, what I care about is this front view because that's basically what we're going to capture here in our render. And this is super important if you're dealing with renders uh, with your clients or anything like that. The first thing that you want to do is to always set up the composition and have a clear clear answer to what kind of angle you're going to get something. Okay, cool. So we have the parameter of the house and with the F key, I'm just going to go inside for, I guess, 20 centimeters. And then we're just going to delete this. Now what I'm going to do is basically, I'm just going to group these. I will click make group. And then I'm going to go down here at tags. Once again, I'm going to create a new tag and I will type in interior walls. And now what I'm going to do is draw guidelines to help us assign where the openings are going to be of the windows. And this is going to be one door. So this is going to be the entrance door, which is larger than uh, the 90 that we measured here, I think, or is it the same size? Well, uh, we've got that now. So, uh, and then we have the window, which is up to here. Although we have the openings, what we will need to do next is I'm going to go to this view and this is basically our front elevation. So I'm going to rotate it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point from there. I'm going to put it right here in at our reference image. And now we're going to scale this up to where this starts. So now if I delete this and I click the edge of the building and I put it right here at the end of the wall, first things first, this wall will go up to here. And then let's just extrude this upwards. And then let's just extrude this upwards. What we're doing here is basically just drawing the window. Put the glass here on SketchUp just to have a better idea of where everything is, how everything is looking. So this is going to be darker. This is going to be darker. Um, this, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know. Uh, I'm just going to put that hit there. Um, th that is fine. Anything else that we'll need here? I don't think so. Let's go with the second floor actually. Place this, uh, this needs to be a bit further actually. So I think I'm gonna do it based on this edge. So this edge needs to be right here. This somehow seems to be almost perfectly scaled. We're gonna close this off. I don't think we need any of the interior walls. Once again, those are not gonna be visible. Uh, these are the only interior walls that are going to be visible at the end of the day anyway. So I'll just close all of these off. Uh, what else is going to be visible here? I think this wall, this interior wall, and then, well, actually the windows here. So this should be some like this. Let me just go inside here. Um, let me find our elevation. Let me just put it right here. Let me go a bit backwards with it, but that's going to be fine because these seem to have different kind of openings. If I delete this, are we in any way? These are not aligned anyway. So we do not need to align the walls perfectly. This will need to be pushed. Uh, then I'll just copy this upwards. Uh, let me just close this off. So I will just draw a rectangle from this edge to the other edge here. Uh, let me close it off. And then let me just go upwards for like two centimeters. Let's push pull the frames all the way up. This is gonna be the opening of the actual window. I could have done this so much earlier and saved so much time and headache from that stupid um, new feature that SketchUp has put out. I mean, it's not even that new. I just, yeah, I just stayed away from it. I have a tendency to, to like to stay away from, from new features until they're like, uh, one of the windows finally seems to be done. So that's a good thing. Uh, let's just do the same thing on the other side. These ones seem to be wider, I think. Um, and then I can just meet these two somewhere in the middle scale tool somewhere in the middle okay i'll just go double click take that off i think as far as the modeling goes this is gonna have this type of concrete this is gonna have this type of concrete and let me just choose yeah black top new i know this is not even concrete but i'll just apply it here just for the by the way this is just for color coding for uh d5 render so, so the sandbox tool basically allows us to model a lot more organic terrain so it is going to be a lot more organic because in just a second, what I'm going to do here, uh, let me just move this upwards. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go inside and because in real life, there are not like, there's rarely any like super flat 
uh, surface on like landscape, anything like that. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna use the smooth tool and I will just, uh, just move all of these just a tiny bit just to create just to create some irregularities to the landscape basically so now i'll just use the line tool we'll draw something like this uh over here and then over on this side all right cool I just feel like we should be ready to move over to D5. And in just a second, we're gonna do that. Um, look at the way that we're starting out and remember this when we actually go to the final render, you're gonna see the transformation that it will happen here. And I'm gonna go and first add the materials. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with the grass. So this needs to be a grass material. Let me go grass, uh, just a few seconds for it to generate. All right, so now we have grass, cool. First step done. Second step, let's go to the driveway. I'm gonna select this and I will do, I will use the batch import PBR textures. This basically just allows us to automatically assign all the PBR textures to any place we need. We have this concrete material and I'll just select all of these. I'll click open and as you can see in just a second, material pack contains, I don't know what that said, but anyway, I think the size of this might be a bit too big. Let me try and decrease it or make it smaller. Or is it, yeah, I think something like this would work better. Something like this is uh, some more similar to what we have there. And then, yeah, next up, let's do the concrete. I'm just gonna, first of all, I'm just gonna place them. Um, and then I will actually tweak them. It's totally fine, no worries. Um, let me do the same thing with this material. I think this is gonna come up. I think this render is gonna come out well. Apply all of these here. As you can see as of now, I'm just placing everything. I will do the editing of the material a bit later on. And then let's do the planks. Uh, by the way, all of these materials, I got them from ambientcg.com. Let me go inside this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use AI Atmospheric Match, which D5 has, which is one of my favorite tools that any software has. What this is basically gonna do is, is gonna allow us to upload the reference image that we have, which is this one, and it's going to match. And honestly, I've seen it work wonders many times. What I can definitely tell for this is that I'm just gonna turn off the sun completely. Let's go to effects, let's, yeah, auto exposure is off. Um, and the sun, I think we need to use an HRI or something. And then let's go to customize HRI. I have an HRI that I found earlier before. We will tweak these around in just a second. I'm gonna go back to GVN Sky and leave it at this. And since this is done, I'm gonna add some assets. We're gonna add some vegetation. I think I can go here at favorites and I'm gonna try some, like three, four, five of them, and we should be fine. Also, I'm gonna place some parallax in the interior, which is basically, that is such a useful feature where you can just add interior, like furnishing and stuff like that without actually adding the modeling. It just saves a lot of time and adds a lot more context into your renders, and I absolutely love that. There are so many smart features inside of D5. Um, I think they just really, really know what people really, really need. Let me just put that there. Uh, I'll just do like two or three of them. Uh, rotation, something like this. Cool. I'm gonna go to the brush tool. I will go upwards and I will add uh, the trees in the back. I'm gonna increase radius. Let's click this, this, this. Hopefully this won't crash. And I've noticed that the actual uh, live sync tool with D5 is not very stable. How is this looking? Is it, are the trees a bit too big? All right, I think something like this could work. Actually, let me just do a bit more here in the back. Yeah, I'll just grab this one, for example. We'll use the edge of this for basically um, composition and yeah, that looks all right. Uh, it's good enough for us. Uh, let me turn on the exposure just a bit. I think I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use the AI atmospheric match once again. Okay, let me turn off the sun. I just wanna turn off the sun completely. Something like this, all right. I definitely want to deal with lighting and fix this. Let's go to HRI. We have our HRI here. Let me go to effects. 
turn this off a bit. Let me go to environment, light, background definitely needs to be a bit darker. Light definitely needs to be a bit darker. Sun needs to be a bit dimmer. Oh, actually, let me just add the parallax, interior parallax. And then once that is done, it should be pretty much just fine. The windows seem to have a bit too much refraction or seem to be reflecting a bit too much. Maybe they should be less specular. Uh, let me go to this. Uh, let's do another parallax over there. Temperature, maybe this needs to be more on the colder side. Okay, so this was downloaded. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here at uh, skylight. Let me try and rotate it. Something like this could work. I think the, the background of the sky itself looks all right now. What I think we will need is, yeah, more light coming in like this, the sun. I'm gonna turn it off completely. Okay, so step by step, I think we're getting closer. I'm pretty confident this will go well. Point light, let me put this inside there. Let me actually turn on the intensity on it. Or actually, do we need to go here and increase the lighting in these? Residential interior. I think this is in the back. So this definitely needs to be a bit more over here. This definitely needs to be a bit uh, on the warmer side. Actually, let me just, I want to switch off the parallax. I think we need more opacity, first of all. Yeah, I'll just need to fix the glass first. Okay, so this definitely needs to be rotated. It was in the wrong side. And now we'll increase the size of it. That is good, cool. Let's move this one downwards as well now. Uh, but this one needs to be smaller in size. Let's go back to our scene. Uh, what I'm worried most about here is the lighting, but I think I'm gonna leave that for last because uh, let me just take care of the materials first. This definitely needs to be darker, uh, less, less saturation, um, zero. Cool, a base color uh, definitely needs to be something like this. And then this one, this one is looking all right. The roughness needs to be a bit lower, but it's looking fine, maybe a bit darker. Yeah, I think, yeah, something like this can work. And this is what we need to deal with the most, I think, in terms of materials. So this one needs to be a bit more on the gray side, a guard, uh, ground garden light. So we could have just used any type of lighting, but yeah. Let me increase this in size a bit. Yeah, let's just go here at the spotlight. Let's move this upwards, something like, yep, something like this. The temperature, a lot warmer. Uh, intensity, just a bit less, yeah. And then we also need to add a ground light over here at the entrance. Less intensity, something like this. Let's go back, scene one. Okay, uh, this is better. Now the sky looks a lot more closer to what we have here, maybe just a bit brighter the sky looks a bit closer um, what about if we rotate it a bit uh, because the bright side needs to come from the left it is something like this let me turn off these let me turn off the parallax first of all so I guess I'll just do the whole thing anyway first off let's go over here let's go living room full just give me a full living room uh, I don't have time to and go through everything just do living room please just go to living room come on uh just give me whichever one i don't care uh too much choices not good let's just do this all right cool much better i think we can just do that a lot quicker uh and then yeah uh then we have the interiors which shouldn't be a problem how is this looking over here still better i know we're not matching the furniture to the floor plans and everything Let's move it to this floor and let, let's rotate it. Let's put it here at the back, back on our scene here. And let's just save this first. First of all, this definitely needs a bigger cone angle and it definitely needs less intensity. Yeah, it makes more sense like this. I think we need to increase how specular this is. Okay, let's just see what AI does for us. I'm gonna export this. Let's just see what the AI enhancer does for us here. But I guess it's still fine. 
Well, it just enhances the AI. Let's see how all that will turn out. Interesting. Let me just, uh, let me go to Photoshop. And yeah, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, let me go to the channels. Okay, material ID. This is exactly what I was looking for. I'll just make this selection real quick. Rise layer, copy, paste. We're gonna go inside this. We're gonna turn this off. And now let's just copy it. New layer. There's probably a faster way that I could have done this. Filter, uh, camera off filter. Let's turn off some of this purplish tint that this has. Is this gonna look better? I hope so. Yes, nice. So we achieved that. That's good. Yeah, I want this layer fixed. So let's go camera raw filter once again. Uh, exposure a bit less, temperature a bit more on. How is this gonna look? Not good. Ah, uh, is the leaves? Is the leaves that's messing it up? Damn. Okay. Uh, what if I just do this? What? Let me just take this off. What if I just do filter camera raw filter? And then I just go to the saturation of blues, color mixer, saturation of blues, something like this, luminance, the blues. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And the saturation, I can lower it down. And I think something like this looks all right. Pretty much done. Cool. Okay, we're done with this render. Finally, I'm done, uh, render. For final <sighs> nice well at least I'm I think we saved this image compared to what it was gonna be like so this is a reference image and this is the final image 